What's up, YouTube? This is True Raw for TV. So, on the last day of the regular season, the Warriors got a much, much needed victory. I mean, it was a very important victory over the Memphis Grizzlies today. And um, they have officially or unofficially, I'll say unofficially, captured the AC. Now, any other situation, any other scenario, the Warriors would have captured the AC. But because of the play-in tournament and the special circumstances of this season, uh, I don't think it's over quite yet <clears throat> as far as the Warriors securing a playoff spot. But they're getting close. And uh, Steph Curry laid it out tonight. You know, he scored 46 points. Uh, didn't shoot the ball with the usual efficiency. Uh, 16 of 36 from the floor. 9 of 22 from three-point range. But, you know, in a situation like this, you don't give a fuck about your number, your stats or your efficiency. You got to do what you got to do to, 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 to seal the victory. And he did that. And with his 46 points tonight, he beats out Bradley Beal for the NBA scoring title. Um, he won the scoring title back in 2015-16, averaging 30.1 points per game. This year, uh, at age 33, I believe, uh, Curry is. I think he's 33. 32 or 33. Uh, he, uh, 30, I think he's 33. He wins the scoring title for the second time in his career, averaging 32 points per game. All right. Uh, this season, he shot 48% from the floor, about 42% from three-point range, and 93% from the foul line. Um, look, Steph Curry has to be, when you look at the second half of the season especially, and when you look at how he started the season, um, he was still kind of stuck in the you know, in the mindset of being a co-contributor, he wasn't aggressive enough. A lot of people, including myself, criticized Curry. He stepped up to the challenge. A lot of people, um, including myself, thought they would be, a, you know, at best a 30-win team. And um, the Warriors, even though this is one of their weaker teams in recent years, you know, this and last year, uh, Curry stepped up. He put his team on his back. and. He has them on the verge of the playoffs. And um, I think that he is one of the leading candidates for MVP. Now, I don't think he's the number one candidate, but I do think that he's in the discussion. And over the next week, um, being in the play-in tournament, <clears throat> you know, I guess incorporates the regular season, uh, it, it should play a factor in the MVP. And if Curry goes off, dominates, and ensures that his team makes it to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? He has to be in that conversation. You know? Now, by default, a lot of people, I guess, would have Jokic or, um, because of all the injuries this year, Jokic or Julius Randle. Um, you know, as far as MVP leaders. Um, but... Curry, I think, the thing that hurts Curry is this. Generally speaking, in the modern era, the last 40 years, last 35 to 40 years, the MVP has generally been the best player on the best team or one of the best teams. Whichever guy has had a real impact on a team that's in an upper echelon NBA. It's been like that since the, the Showtime Laker, Mad, uh, Larry Bird era. Um, now, Russ won it some years ago. But, and I think some people look at it as a justification for Curry winning it this year, but there's some differences. Um, Russ had a truly historic season. Remember, he was the first player in 55 years to average a triple-double, which at one point... Nobody thought it was possible again. Um, he led the league in scoring. Russ also led the NBA, if I'm not mistaken, in assists that year. I think he led it in assists that year. And um, the thing that 
separates, I think, that year from this year is expectations. When Kevin Durant left that team, most people thought that the Thunder were at best a 31 team of a full season. The fact that they almost won 50 games, I think they were the fifth or sixth seed that year. Um, at one point, I think they even got as high as the third or fourth seed. They were exceeding everybody's expectations. And, you know, the fact that Russ had such a dominant campaign, plus team success, making it to the playoffs, in a stacked Western Conference when the Warriors were at their full power, Houston was a better team overall at that time. That's when they had Harden and Chris Paul. Um, there were some other contenders as well. You know what I'm saying? It was a stacked, stacked Western Conference. The Western Conference is still stacked, but it's more parity now, whether it's due to injuries, the Lakers, or what have you. It's more parity now than there was when Russ won it, when you had the Warriors who beating every fucking body. And, you know, the Houston was beating everybody else except for Golden State. And then, you know, you know, I think Portland was a better team than OKC that year. I can't remember everybody's record, but records that year. But um, this year, the Warriors, I think, may have exceeded expectations to some people um, a little bit. but. Then again, you know, it depends on who you talk to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will say this. I know Draymond Green has uh, said that he thinks Steph should be the MVP. Well, if he is, then Draymond Green is basically saying, by comparing Curry to Westbrook, he's basically saying that he ain't shit himself. Because if you're saying that Curry don't have any help, then you're basically saying that you ain't shit. You're admitting that you're not shit. That you're not shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know it is what it is. Though. I think Russ really didn't have that much help that year. You know he had Victor Oladipo, but Oladipo didn't have a good season by his standards. And as a matter of fact, the next season when he played in Indiana, he averaged 24, 25 points a game. But he credited Russell Westbrook with showing him how to take better care of yourself in the coming the season. The coming to the season in great shape. He took that advice, got himself in better shape for the next season, and he came out and had uh, a much improved uh, season with the Pacers. I think he won most improved player that year, too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but other than Oladipo, he didn't really have any help. Sabonis was, I think, a first or, se or second year player who didn't really have much NBA experience, hadn't developed yet. Uh, Andre Robeson was a dinosaur who wasn't fit for the the, the new age NBA. I think that was his last year playing. Good defensive player, but he couldn't shoot. Uh, so Russ didn't really have any help. Curry has more help offensively, in my opinion, than Russ did. I'm not saying that he has, you know, like goddamn, you know, gang bang shooters around him, but he does have, you know, uh, what's his face uh, from Minnesota. Um, what's his damn name? Um, Jesus. Um, I can't think of his name right now. Jesus, man. Uh, Wiggins. He does have Wiggins on his team. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kelly Oubre, who's been inconsistent, you know, whatever. But, you know, Wiggins is a guy that can give you 17 or 20 points a night. So, but look, at the end of the day, I think Curry is a top three to four MVP right now. Um, I, I, yeah, I would say he's a top, a top three to four MVP. I still think <coughs> that Chris Paul should be in the conversation. I know he doesn't have the most gaudy stats, you know what I'm saying? But in my opinion, I think that he's an MVP candidate as well. But tell me what you guys think. 